Right, I want to talk to you about the current day, modern day threat, if you like, in terms of civilian self-protection within Commonwealth countries, Europe, across the world really. And how the threat is fast changing and fast evolving to the point where learning skills of unarmed self-protection in a physical sense are not going to be enough to deal with the threat. So what that brings into play is understanding how to implement a force multiplier. So the definition of a force multiplier is any tool or where legality allows weapon by design that you could implement in order to produce more force output yourself in a potentially real threat to life situation. So having a force multiplier in your hand, be that an improvised weapon of opportunity that has weapon profile attributes but is not a weapon by design, or an actual purpose-built weapon where you know, the legality allows in the place that you live so concealed carry firearm fixed blade folding blade uh, a less than lethal alternative such as a pepper spray or chemical irritant or some sort of taser of some kind or maybe some form of baton blunt force trauma tool you get the idea force multiplier that will allow you to in effect create more damage with less effort. So where does that belong? Well obviously that belongs in a situation where you are facing a threat disparity which is going to be pretty much any situation that you find yourself in. So nowadays always assume there is a weapon and there's more than one and what we're seeing clearly is there's more than one and all have a weapon. Well if all you have is unarmed skills in a physical sense, then I don't know what to tell you. I don't believe there's any skill set out there that's going to allow you to deal with a multiple armed threat. So there is a need to evolve as a combative trainee. There is a need to evolve as a student of self-protection and self-preservation. Of course, the primary of any self-protection doctrine is don't fucking be there in the first place so the first thing that you should learn to cultivate is a high level of awareness situational and environmental awareness and follow that with a deep understanding of pre-threat cue behavior know what you're seeing and what it means to you cultivate a harder target confident body language profile that make you less likely to be selected as a victim of assault in the first place understand skills of de-escalation and in all cases the primary objective would be to avoid, escape, evade, de-escalate or mitigate in as many ways as you can to prevent physical violence coming your way. That's the personal security elements of your self-protection plan. They're primarily non-physical. They should be tip-top first. The next two elements of your self-protection plan, game plan, would be dealing with a physical dynamic, first of all from a proactive perspective, and then where that's not possible, from a reactive perspective. In terms of that, the start point of course is to become proficient with your natural bodily weapons. You need to know how to use your natural bodily tools from your fingertips to your elbows, from your knees to the point of your boot. You know how to use your head in a literal head-butting sense and know how to bite. Primary weapon, understand, is your mind. You need to get your head right. So the first layer would be becoming uh, a force multiplier with the tools that God gave you and with the savvy understanding, intelligence and wisdom that you can cultivate from becoming a good student of self-protection. But I've got to tell you, in all honesty, that's not enough 
for the evolving societal threat that we are seeing. You need to learn how weapons work, period. So a force multiplier is what is going to allow you to level up the playing field within a force, uh, force to threat disparity situation. So if you are facing a threat disparity, right, so a larger, stronger, aggressive male against a woman, a young adult, or a lesser male, let's say. Somebody who's armed against somebody who's unarmed. Multiple subjects against one subject. Multiple armed subjects against an unarmed subject. This would be a threat disparity. And in such a situation, deadly force could be offered to you. Definition of deadly force. Any force offered to you that is likely to cause grievous bodily harm and or your death. That's a level 10 threat. Well, if you want to deal with a level 10 threat, you must cultivate a level 10 physical response. And that is not necessarily going to be enough or possible unarmed. A force multiplier is the acknowledgement that you are not necessarily going to be the most capable individual in all situations. Acknowledging the need to implement and understand how to use a force multiplier is the acknowledgement that you could well indeed meet a situation on a force to threat parallel that you simply cannot deal with unarmed. Especially with the fast changing threat that we are seeing in today's society. In relation to a force multiplier, the first thing that you need to understand is the mentality or the mindset associated with being comfortable with implementing the use of a force multiplier be it an improvised weapon or a purpose-built weapon in your hand for the purpose of your own self-preservation in a physical situation. Many uninformed individuals that come from a martial arts background that still have that false sense of security in terms of their ability in relation to their unarmed skills and as yet untested skills. Such individuals might say to you, well, if you use a weapon, you are insecure in your own martial ability. This is foolhardy and untrue. Now, if you are trained and facing somebody who is quite obviously on their own and unarmed of equal size and ability, then of course, don't use a force multiplier. Don't bring a weapon into the equation, particularly if you're a trained individual. You know, do your thing and deal with the, the situation as best you can unarmed. If the, you know, the threat disparity is even to a degree, at least from an outset, then of course, then don't use a weapon against somebody who is unarmed, unless there was a force to threat disparity. If you are evenly matched, then don't use a force multiplier, period. But that's not what I'm talking about. So today's ill, we use tactics of ambush and deception along with weapons and multiple friends who may indeed also have weapons. So I want you to imagine for a moment, if you will, a trained woman returning to her car in an underground car park in evening hours after she's finished work. Because she's a switched on individual, she recognizes that she's been followed by three men, all who are potentially armed, and are exhibiting motivation that leads her to believe that she's about to be potentially gang raped. And she also understands that such a heinous crime could indeed turn to murder and her demise. So she recognizes she's facing a serious threat disparity and a potential level 10 deadly threat force to her life. Well, I don't know of any unarmed skill set that will offer a high probability of success for dealing with a threat such as that for me, let alone for her. All I can tell you people is it's time to wake up on a number of levels, particularly to the modern enemy of today and how they operate. Now over the last 15 years, various knife based methods of self protection have come into vogue for a reason that of evolving necessity. The old cliche that the use of a knife or any force multiplier or weapon is only for the nefarious criminal, is outdated and fucking dangerous. 
The very idea that makes such individuals think that is the very thing that makes them a fucking victim. Now add to that, as I've said many times before, the unlawful disarming of your right to carry literally anything that would be remotely construed as a weapon or a tool for the purpose of your own self-protection as a civilian. Well, such impositions have been imposed for ever, for a, certainly for a long time, upon all Commonwealth countries. Laws that stifle our ability to uphold our God-given right to defense of self. Laws, incidentally, that most certainly do not apply to the criminal. We can also see now that the corporately owned legal system, along with their order following police officers, clearly have no concern or priority for the safety of the tax-paying, law-abiding civilians of those countries, thereby leaving them totally defenceless. Add to this the fact that the police officer will never be there when you need them, and on the miraculous off chance that they were, they are under no obligation to help or protect you should it place them in a position of jeopardy. So now you will see if you open your eyes that metaphorically speaking, we have been pushed up shit creek without a paddle. So what can we do about that, I hear you ask? Well, first of all, understand that this is indeed how it is. Add to that the way society is going, there is a high probability that in the lifetime that we all have left within this realm, there is a very high probability that you and I will face a potentially lethal deadly force threat involving you and or those you love and would seek to protect. So like I said, this is a level 10 threat. If you want to deal with a level 10 threat, well then you've got to cultivate a level 10 response in terms of your use of force. And I'm telling you that even an extremely athletic military grade level of unarmed skill proficiency, a level incidentally that is unavailable to most laymen that practice self-defense or self-protection, will more than likely not be enough to counter the kind of violent threat that we are seeing on a global level on our streets now. Blade crime is becoming fucking rife. And people within society are becoming more and more unstable. With crazy violent overreactions, even over the most trivial events. And within these kind of events, the use of a knife or a bladed weapon seems to be right up there in terms of tool of choice. And the reason for that is clear. A knife or a point and edge weapon is the easiest thing to inflict potentially lethal damage with and the hardest thing to defend against, particularly unarmed. So in terms of solution, first, you must understand the entirety of the problem. You must know the enemy, as Sun Tzu would say. You need to know the violent enemy that you may face in the street and the secondary enemy that you may face post-event should you take it upon yourself to defend yourself from such violation and or death. Understand that there is a high chance that if you defend yourself in the street to a point where you've had to implement up to and including lethal force, you may well indeed be persecuted and prosecuted for your actions post-event by the so-called judicial system that was implemented and put in place to protect you in the first place. Something that incidentally is unlikely to happen to your attacker who is unlikely to even see the inside of a courtroom. Now that is the reality of the problem. So I'm considered high up in this field, in this business, and there's a few peers that you could count on one hand that would be considered my equal. And yet, I'm the only one that's going to be candid enough to tell you this. Simply because I don't give a fuck either. This is the enemy. This is the modern day threat. The whole thing seems to be completely inverted from what older values and beliefs have raised us to understand, at least my generation, in terms of justice and what's right. Understand that we all have the God-given right to live and breathe 
without being nefariously injured or killed. So the first thing is to know what you face and know with righteous indignation that you do indeed have a right to fight back and be safe. Now the other side of the coin, as Sun Tzu would say, is know yourself. There is a need to ask yourself, where do you currently stand in terms of psychological preparedness to face and if need be to deliver up to and including potentially lethal force in order to potentially counter a violent, life-threatening, life-ending incident. Do you have the minerals? If not, why not? And more importantly, what can you do to reframe your perspective of that? In a physical sense, which is really the primary topic of this discussion, the answer is simple. Learn how to fucking fight on all levels. Using a force multiplier begins with you becoming a force multiplier in a physical sense. As I said, foundationally, you should know how to use all your natural bodily tools and weapons and become extremely combatively efficient and armed. That's the start of you becoming a force multiplier. Then add to that incrementally weapon-based layers. Learn as many weapon systems as possible. Regardless of where you live, regardless of the legality, learn how to use weapons. So that may be you put yourself in a training environment using training weapons with competent combative tuition of how those things work, as well as doing your own research and practicing. Know how weapons work. At the very least, if you can't apply yourself to becoming combatively efficient with your unarmed natural bodily tools, because you don't have the time or whatever, whatever stops you from doing that, as a basic combative foundation, then learn how weapons work. Learn how to use any point and edge weapon from a small concealable knife to a machete or a sword. Know how blunt force inducing tools that create blunt force trauma work. Impact weapons. And where legality allows, learn how to shoot and handle firearms. Now in terms of legality, understand now that I am most certainly not telling you to carry anything that could be construed as an illegal weapon in the country, state or place that you live. I am not telling you to do that. We all have to coexist within this broken system. And even though there is a big difference between what would be considered lawful such as your God-given right under natural law to protect and arm yourself against all armed enemies to what is considered legal. Man-made laws that are imposed to suit whatever narrative or agenda that has been put in place suggests. You do not want to go to jail, so abide by the rules. Unless or until, of course, we reach that point where society breaks down completely and we find ourselves temporarily or for however long without the rule of law. In which case, all fucking bets are off. And for those of us that live in these Commonwealth countries where there is no Second Amendment, it will be time to go fucking medieval. But unless or until that happens, and in order to remain a so-called law-abiding civilian, you have got to follow the fucked up rules now that means that there is a severe threat disparity, a disproportional arm that benefits the nefarious violent criminal who will carry purpose-built weapons regardless for the purpose of your demise simply because he couldn't give a fuck about the rules or the so-called legal system that's in place. Not to forget that as your attacker, you will most likely be privy to much better legal protection than you as the victim. That is, of course, if they even ended up inside a courtroom in the first place. So what I am telling you, as people that live in such countries, is to learn how to use weapons. Learn how to use weapons by design within a training environment using training weapons under competent combative supervision. Start doing that from a martial learning and academic study perspective. Also, I would suggest that you keep whatever 
weapons by design that you may at least right now legally own within the confines of your home. Do not carry said tools for the purpose of your self-protection out on the street, period. But keep them in your house, have them, and learn how to fucking use them. In addition to this, learn how to use your environment. Learn how to use any improvised weapon of opportunity or of personal carry that is not considered a weapon by purpose-built design, but has weapon attributes attached to it. And even then, such an item implemented as a force multiplier, which it could indeed be used, would only be implemented out of an act of sheer desperation, where there is no other choice other than to be the hammer or the anvil. Gaining and acquiring such knowledge can literally be the thing that will potentially save your life when it's facing a potentially deadly force threat situation such as what we've talked about. So know how everything works in regards to as many weapon systems as possible. Learn that shit. Knowing that, knowing how things work, how weapons work, will also give you a deeper understanding of how they could be implemented or used against you. Particularly when you study the MO or the modus operandi or the way in which a nefarious criminal would operate and use weapons. Study how weapon-bearing violent criminals operate. That's a definite must. That's part of your study. Knowing the enemy, as I said. Knowing how they operate and cultivating a very high level of awareness and a good understanding of pre-threat cue behavior will give you options. The best being seeing things early enough to completely avoid, escape and evade. Such knowledge and understanding will allow you to mitigate the majority of situations that you may find yourself in. Remember, like I said, the best self-protection of all is don't fucking be there. But if that's not possible and violence is now coming your way, then knowing what they know in terms of using any type of force multiplier, in our case, something that may not be construed as a weapon or a purpose-built weapon by design, but has weapon attributes, and knowing what tactics they implement so that you could implement similar tactics in, let's call it a counter ambush sense, may indeed be the only measures that will allow you to escape in one piece relatively unscathed, as opposed to in pieces having met your demise. In short, it's better to know this stuff and not need it than need it and be dead. So if I take you back to the early example of the woman, the train woman returning to her car, being followed by three potentially armed men with the objective of gang rape or and or worse, let's say that this woman is trained in the use of force of a force multiplier. And let's say that she has something on her person where it it's not construed as a weapon by design, if she lives in a Commonwealth country but has weapon of, uh, attributes, or it is a weapon by design because she lives in a country where legality allows her to carry the same. Either way, she has a force multiplier and she knows how to use it. In this case, we're talking about a spike-like tool. A spike-like tool that she could hide in her hand. Then on approach, she stabbed one of them in the eye with enough vicious intent that it allowed her to run to her car, get inside, lock the door, and drive off as soon as possible. Well, now she has just escaped the life-changing chance of getting brutally gang raped, possibly infected with HIV, beaten half to death or killed so that she can't identify her assailants at any later date. Well, in that particular situation, I would say that all is fair and love and fucking war, wouldn't you? Or what about just one of too many examples that I could give you of so-called active threat terror incidents? So an active shooter incident speaks for itself. A person's using a firearm. But in Europe and the UK, we're, we're more likely or have been more likely up until this point to see active threat situations that involve terrorists with edged weapons seeking to kill and behead as many unarmed, innocent people as possible. One particularly disturbing incident I find disturbing due to the fact that I'm a grandfather and I have children happened on June the 8th in 2023, this year, in Anarchy or Annecy, France, where a knife-wielding assailant terrorized a park on the shores of a popular lake in the French Alps. 
where he went on to seriously injure four preschool children and two adults before being arrested at scene. You are talking about four babies aged between 22 months and three years old being hacked and stabbed at by an adult assailant with a big fucking knife. This is the world that we live in now. Not to mention the large number of similar incidents where innocent, unarmed, unprotected, defenseless people have been killed in large numbers. Like the incident in Kuming Station in China, where a group of eight knife-wielding assailants stormed the station, killing 29 people and seriously injuring 140 more as they slashed and stabbed indiscriminately to as many unarmed innocents as possible. Or how about something a little closer to home? Used from a UK perspective. During the so-called terror attack in London during June of 2017 in Borough Market near London Bridge, where knife-wielding assailants had knives in their hands, taped to their hands, and indiscriminately attacked and killed eight unarmed defenseless, innocent people, injuring dozens more. Need I go on? But what if, going back to the incident in France, with the children, what if someone was in the park that day, legally armed, with a force multiplier, the correct mindset and some training, and was willing to employ their God-given right to defense of self, as well as the defense of innocence, such as those little children. Maybe someone just like me. Well, maybe, just maybe that outcome and others like it that have ended in tragedy could have been rightfully prevented. Awareness is most certainly the key to avoidance, but awareness is also the key to staying left of bang in terms of recognizing such pre-threat key behavior so that early action can be taken in a proactive sense. The old adage that the best defense is a fucking good offense comes to mind here belongs here, particularly in an active threat situation. But having a force multiplier and knowing how to use it and being willing to use it would be absolutely crucial. Add to that the use of and the understanding and the use of their own criminal tactics, such as ambushing the subject from behind with a force multiplier. Well, now at least you'd have a chance. There's no guarantees for sure, but a chance nonetheless. I'll go as far as to say is that such tactics, tools and understanding may indeed be the only chance that you have in order to protect yourself, those you love and those around you in such a situation. Know that seeing it early, having some skills, having a force multiplier and most importantly the mindset and mentality necessary to take part in the first place may indeed be the only way that you will prevail in such a situation. Understand that if you want to deal with bad people then it is necessary to know how bad fucking works, period. Case examples being those that I've already given you. Now, as I said, the situation in the school was particularly triggering for me as a grandfather and a father. So, you know, just imagine how if someone was armed, switched on and willing to fight, how something could have been done to change the outcome of that event but unlawfully disarmed and defenseless with no help arriving anytime soon, then I ask you, what fucking chance have you got in a situation like that? But even with some training and mental preparation, even with an improvised tool of opportunity that could have been ploughed through that child murdering entity's head would have given those poor children that day and those adults a much better chance. So. Learn how to use a force multiplier, people, and carry something that you could improvise that is not a weapon by design, if you live in a Commonwealth country, in order to improvise, adapt, and overcome. And if you are fortunate enough to live in a country or live in a place where you can legally and lawfully carry a purpose-built weapon by design, then get skilled and carry it. It's a no-brainer. Final word, if you want to be peaceful, you've got to be a warrior. And if you want to be good, then you got to be fucking dangerous, period. Remember, evil flourishes when so-called good men stand back and do nothing. Be safe and live life to the full.
Peace.